U.S. shipping ports are full of goods. Warehouses nearby are also full of goods. But in some parts of the country, store shelves inventory is depleted. Here with me to discuss the supply chain disruptions, Trudy Bartow, the sales director at the Unemployed Philosophers Guild. Trudy, how's it going, first of all? Going great. Thanks for having me. Great to talk to you. And I want to ask you, first of all, the process through getting a product in stores. And we can talk about whether that's physical or online. But what does that look like behind the scenes? Sure thing. So here at the Unemployed Philosophers Guild, we make gifts. Sort of tchotchka you'd see at your home, mugs, bars of soap, puppets. But the process is really same no matter what you have. It could be chemicals to make paint or timber to make your home. Everything really starts in a supply chain. And you think of an idea here. Our offices are in Brooklyn. We sit around a table. We come up with an idea. Then we sketch a product and we partner with our manufacturers in China. And that's where the product is physically produced. Once it's physically produced, it goes on a big, long journey in a boat, on a port, through the ocean, back to another port, off onto a truck or a rail and into a warehouse. And that's before it ever gets into a customer's hands. So that's a little bit of the process. And it doesn't really matter if it's ultimately going into a retail store that's brick and mortar or if it's going into a warehouse for Amazon or through an online supply, because it physically has to get into the States and get into a warehouse before it can then get on a truck and get to that end user. So it sounds like the process for both online and physical stores is relatively the same. So then moving forward to my next question, that problems that UPG is encountering with supply chain would be applicable to both online and in-store products, right? That's correct. The problem really is uh, pretty much on every step along the way in every major outlet. So it, it, I would say that it's because of the pandemic sort of highlighted the cracks in the system. And it's really because the the demand for goods has never been higher and the demands for goods immediately has never been higher. You know, before, if you wanted to buy something, you thought, okay, I need a new pair of shoes. I'll go to the store and I'll pick a pair of shoes that are there. But now because of the internet, you know, the brand you want, you know, the serial number, the colors, the size, and it's very specific. So when you go, that's exactly what you want. And you don't want it in a week or two or three, you want it delivered to your house the next day. So that pressure, of demand is just already taxing a system that is sort of at its breaking point. Then when you throw in port closures due to COVID delays and safety protocols, and when you want to throw in dock hours and port hours, and then throw in the fact, just to add to this pot, that there's less people available who want to do these jobs. You know, 20 years ago, being a truck driver was a great job that you were able to support your family and you were able to make it work. And today that's much harder. So every step of the way is just difficult. And so now we have all these problems that are sort of emphasized by the COVID-19 pandemic. And now we have the holidays coming up. So do you anticipate these challenges impacting holiday purchasing? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I tell all of my friends and family, if you are in a store or you are online and you see something that you want for your daughter or your husband or your friend, buy it now because it might not be there in the next day or the next week. And for sure, it's not going to be there for the holidays. Um, there's definitely a large amount of product that's coming in. You, maybe you've heard there's 60 plus vessels um, out of the port of LA right now, full of shipping containers. And each of those shipping containers is packed full of the things that people want. So there is goods coming into stores. It's just a matter of timing. You know, even though we, the Port of LA is now open 24 hours, it still is a lot of physical work to open the container, get it all out, get it on a truck, get it there, then get it to the end user. So things are coming in. I mean, there shouldn't be a panic that there's no product. I'm never going to see another hot toy that my kid desperately needs. It's there. It's just slowly making its way to you. <laughs> and Trudy, is there anything that UPG can do to get ahead of the issue or is it too late for, for that? So in, in some respects, it's never too late. I mean, especially what we do, which is gifts, there's always another gift. We can try to work with our customers to find solutions to swap out. Maybe it's not the red baseball hat. Maybe it's the blue baseball hat. Um, so in that respect, we're working very closely with our retail partners and our vendors to try to get them what they want. Uh, the other thing we're trying to do is where we can we're trying to switch our supply. Can we do things in the US? Can we do things locally? Sometimes the reality is 
the consumer isn't willing to pay for the costs to make something here. So some things just, we don't have that opportunity to move the supply chain over. Um, but hopefully we're just gonna be able to keep bringing our goods forward, have people be interested in them, get things off these boats and into people's hands. Really sounds like this is gonna have an impact on the globalization process moving forward, now knowing that there are these cracks in the system and that they can be emphasized by something like the COVID-19 pandemic, which of course we all know is extraordinary, but still, Finally, Trudy, I want to ask you, how might these current challenges impact decision making for, for you guys in the future and for anyone? So I think it comes down to a bigger conversation of economy of scale. You know, for many years, we've all been really focused on just in time inventory and keeping our costs down and keeping things you know slight and working very closely to, to bring things in a quick time. But I think we're going to have to go back to looking at stocking up. I mean, we know our customers want X, Y or Z products. So can we forecast it not just for the next two months, but the next three, six, nine months, depending on the type of goods that you do. So that's going to be a bigger conversation. And, you know, also the reality is costs are going up across the board along every step of the way. So the more we can secure things in advance, the more we can be buying in bulk. Maybe there's an opportunity to keep those costs flat or regulated down. And it's just it's an open conversation. And, and the real thing to say here is when we keep talking about the supply chain and the systems and, and the process, we have to remember that every step along the way, these are real people. These are real people who drive the trucks. These are real people who unload the, the containers. These are real you know, people who are physically making the goods. So it's really about making sure that we're not stressing people to the point that they break just to bring goods in and figuring out something that works holistically for the entire system. Those are some really great points. Trudy, thank you so much for joining me today and breaking all this down for us. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm Katie Johnston for CBS Local News.